Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Water, the lifeblood of civilizations, has always been revered and harnessed by humankind. From ancient civilizations to the present era, the need for water management led to the birth of dams. The concept of dam construction dates back thousands of years. When simple structures were built using stone or earth to redirect water flow. However, dam engineering gained momentum during the Industrial Revolution. The advent of reinforced concrete and hydraulic engineering techniques revolutionized the construction of dams. The heights and capacities were significantly improved. The Boulder Dam, known as the Hoover Dam, stood as a testament to human engineering prowess. Completed in 1937, it towers 726 feet high and harnesses the mighty Colorado River, creating the vast Lake Mead Reservoir. Today, dams not only provide crucial water storage for irrigation and drinking water supply, but also generate vast amounts of clean energy. The Itaipu Dam on the Parana River, shared by Brazil and Paraguay, became a symbol of cooperation and technological achievement. Completed in 1984, this massive structure stretches 25,981 feet in length and reaches a height of 643 feet. With a volume of 430 million cubic feet, it claims the position of the world's second largest hydroelectric dam. The Three Gorges Dam in China stands as the world's largest hydroelectric power station. With 960 plus million cubic feet, the $317 million dam produces a mind-boggling 22,500 megawatts of electricity. There are various types of dams, each tailored for specific purposes and geological conditions. Gravity dams, which often consist of concrete or masonry, rely on their weight to resist water pressure. Arch dams, conversely, have a curved shape that transfers force to abutments through water pressure. In areas with weak foundations, buttress dams with vertical supports are more suitable. Embankment dams utilize compact earth or rock fill to withstand water pressure. Another type, the arch gravity dam, combines features of both gravity and arch dams. Concrete face rock fill dams, CFRD, have a rock fill core with a concrete face, providing added stability. Lastly, roller compacted concrete, RCC dams, employ a special compacted concrete mix. Each of these dams serves a distinct purpose, ensuring effective water management in diverse environments. Building a dam is a difficult task. It requires expertise in engineering, geology, and construction techniques. The process begins with site preparation. The construction site is cleared and graded to establish a stable foundation. A dry working environment is necessary. 
Foundation treatment techniques, such as grouting or consolidation, may be employed to strengthen weak or permeable foundations. Minimizing seepage risks. The main components of the dam are then constructed using materials such as concrete, rock fill, or earth. For concrete dams, formwork is erected and concrete is poured in layers, allowing proper curing between each layer. Spillways and outlet works are built to manage excess water and regulate downstream flow. Any hydroelectric components are then installed. Once the dam structure is complete, reservoir filling begins by closing the diversion channels. The reservoir gradually fills, submerging the surrounding area. After rigorous testing and commissioning, the dam's components are ready. These include gates, valves, and hydroelectric systems. Upon final approval, the dam transitions into regular operation. When the dam gates open, a remarkable process unfolds. The gates are typically made of robust materials like steel or reinforced concrete to withstand the pressure. These are tested through rigorous procedures to ensure their reliability. Hydraulic or mechanical systems are activated, operating the gates multiple times under varying conditions. Testing includes assessing gate response, alignment, and sealing effectiveness. Leakage and structural integrity are also examined. Skilled operators closely monitor gate operations and release mechanisms to manage downstream flow and water levels and maintain the required reservoir capacity. They adjust gates and valves to regulate water flow, balancing the supply and demand of water and energy. These tests verify the gate's ability to control water flow effectively and withstand the forces exerted upon them. Gates and valves control the release of water. Water flows into the dam's reservoir, where a vast amount of potential energy is stored. This directed flow is channeled towards turbines housed within the power station. Fort Peck Dam in Montana, for example, is one of the largest earth-filled dams in the world. The force of flowing water spins the turbine blades, therefore activating generators to produce electricity. Monitoring systems constantly assess water levels, power output, and equipment performance. This precise control ensures that homes are empowered with a reliable source of electricity. Regular maintenance is essential to ensure the structure's durability. This involves periodic inspections, cleaning, and repairs. Maintenance tasks include monitoring seepage, checking gate and valve operations, and assessing the condition of concrete surfaces. Yet, the greater part of the dam is submerged making maintenance operations a real challenge. Nevertheless, dam maintenance companies found a way to do it. 
a diver who can dive to the bottom of the dam to conduct repairs, clean intake structures, and ensure proper functioning of underwater components. For instance, in 2016, Denver Water encountered an issue with the emergency reservoir drainage system at Strontia Springs Dam. The problem arose when the drainage system's lifting mechanisms broke, rendering it unable to release water during emergencies. To address this, Denver Water implemented a solution involving the lowering of a heavy bulkhead to fix the gate. However, this presented challenges as the operation took place 200 feet below the reservoir surface with limited visibility. Despite the poor visibility, skilled divers utilized their expertise to locate the position of the bulkhead and successfully resolve the problem. In addition to dams, some countries have developed sophisticated technology to combat coastal erosion. For instance, Japan utilizes a set of seawalls, floodgates, inland locks, interior seawalls, and drainage systems to prevent flooding. Tokyo Bay features 23-foot high seawalls, serving as the primary defense against incoming waves. Additionally, floodgates are strategically positioned at river mouths. In the event of high tides or storms, the gates close to prevent water intrusion. Interior seawalls are erected along rivers and waterways to contain floodwaters within designated areas. Although these mechanisms protect against external waves, heavy rainfall can still raise water levels. Hence, drainage stations equipped with powerful pumps swiftly remove excess water from low-lying areas, reducing the risk of inundation. In South Korea, Busan Jinjang Yanwari employs an innovative construction method to withstand typhoon storms. The structure features a return wave block system that reduces wave energy and prevents inundation. This method utilizes large concrete blocks arranged in a strategic layout to disrupt and dissipate incoming waves. Additionally, an underwater tie cell system connects the blocks. This enhances stability and adds resistance against strong currents. These techniques ensure the structure's resilience and mitigate the destructive impact of typhoon storms. While permanent water management techniques provide long-term solutions for water control, there are also flexible and cost-effective approaches to address immediate flooding or water diversion needs. Aqua dams serve as a great example of such solutions. These temporary water-filled barriers are designed for flood control and water diversion. Constructed from high-strength fabric or rubber materials, aqua dams can withstand water pressure. When filled, they create a barrier to redirect or contain water. Their modular design allows for easy transport and setup in various terrains. During installation, aqua dams are unrolled, anchored, and filled with water using hoses or pumps. The water pressure provides stability, forming a protective barrier against flooding. Rigorous testing ensures the reliability of aqua dams. This includes evaluating the barrier's integrity and performance under different water pressure conditions. These tests involve gradually increasing the water pressure against the barrier while monitoring for any signs of leakage or failure. 
as the demand for water management and energy continues to rise. Engineers push the boundaries of possibility, exploring innovative designs and materials to create dams that are not only functional, but also environmentally sustainable. That is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.